Wednesday and Thursday were significantly different market days. Wednesday, a blood red day I haven't seen in a long time as a result of the NAFTA catastrophe. We received better than expected CPI debt on Thursday, resulting in a bearish rise that lasted until the end of the day. Clearly, it appears that the bulls are back in force, and the bears are once again evaluating the sustainability of this surge. We will discuss AMC regardless of the existence of evidence of short covering. Therefore, make sure to stick around. However, before I continue, I would appreciate if you could give me a thumbs up. Subscribe channel. This is the type of market we enjoy seeing. Clearly, the bulk of stocks are in the green, headed by the tech communications and consumer cyclical sectors, with Apple up 8.9%, Google up 7.58%, and Amazon up 12.1%. Clearly, several of these tech stocks have been totally decimated over the past few weeks, especially after a dismal earnings season that precipitated a big decline. Now, Thursday appears to be mostly favorable. Some of these businesses are performing poorly, but only a few are in the red. However, it does appear significantly different than what we have observed since Wednesday. Now, following Tuesday's midterm elections, it was possible that the market may go in either direction. And then, of course, there was a significant decline in the crypto market, which led to some of the day's selling. Unusual Whales reported that the short-term fate of the stock market hinges on something that has been a huge boon for equities for more than seven decades. Once again, it has been many days since the midterm elections in the United States, and the outcomes are still unknown. Several states are still tallying ballots for the Senate. But based on current forecast, the Democrats will likely assume control. The House is a very different story. It appears that the Republicans may win, but the outcome is still uncertain. In light of this and everything else we observed on Wednesday in the market, here is a summary of what transpired on that day. Unusual wheels tweeting out that it is time to call your mum, right? This is a frightening occurrence on the markets, and it is certainly not what you want to see. Again, this is not the final map, but something somewhat different. The bulk of stocks inside the S and P500 are expected to decline in a rather dramatic manner. Depending on the eventual outcome of these elections, it appears that we will begin to witness some quite intriguing developments. Given that Herschel Walker and Raphael Warnock are currently in a runoff election in Georgia, we will not know the final composition of the Senate until the end of the year. Now, gentlemen, the majority of what we observed early in the week consisted of 7.7% CPI figures. This is much less than what was anticipated. The majority of reports indicate that inflation could still reach 8%. Clearly, there was a chance of 0.5% month-over-month growth. And what we observed in this stunning green print was people's extreme excitement towards the current situation. The Federal Reserve is continuing to gradually increase interest rates, right? Last month, they accumulated 75 basis points. In December, the market will likely price in an additional 50 basis points of tightening. If it is below that threshold, we may witness yet another bearish rally. But if we don't, or if they opt for a 75 basis point increase, we may go back down. The consensus view is that interest rates will continue to rise to approximately 4.5%, at which point the Fed will at least stop. And we may not see a reversal until the end of next year or the beginning of 2024. Now, gentlemen, we must remember that just because inflation is falling, interest rates are rising and the Federal Reserve is purportedly engaging in quantitative tightening does not always indicate that the general price of goods will fall. The only way we will return to our previous position is if the inflation rate falls back into negative territory. In order to accomplish this, the Fed will need to continue raising interest rates much over their comfort level. But Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has made it abundantly clear that his top priority is to guarantee that inflation declines, and he will do whatever it takes to do this. Obviously, there are congressional leadership members who have expressed discomfort with this level. We do not believe this to be the best idea. What is Jerome Powell saying? You know, Janet Yellen's admission that she may have misjudged the impact of inflation is unfortunate. However, you should be aware that the probability of the Federal Reserve causing a recession is skyrocketing. Instead of ensuring a soft landing, the Fed is pushing the economy into a recession, according to a story published by Fortune. Clearly, the Federal Reserve's narrative throughout the past year has been that we would have a gentle landing, then a not-so-soft landing, 
and now it appears that we will experience a hard landing if Jerome Powell continues to participate in the manner that he is doing. Obviously, we could now observe this shift. There is still a chance that there may be a policy reversal that will ultimately lead to something different from what we are currently experiencing. We are aware of that. Although they have stated that they are implementing their quantitative tightening agenda, they have not done so nearly as rapidly as they had previously indicated. Thus, for the time being, many things are still uncertain, and we do not necessarily know what will occur next. Now, President Joe Biden, the leader of the Democratic Party and the current President of the United States, has stated that we are nowhere near a recession. Despite the fact that technical indicators have indicated that we are in a technical recession defined by two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. We are not seeing a typical recession. Obviously, this necessitates a greater unemployment rate. However, given the number of layoffs that have been reported over the previous several weeks, there's a very high likelihood that we will experience one. And looking at what is occurring on Wall Street and the over-leveraged position there in the under-collateralization, it is clear that derivatives are currently in a state of chaos. There is overwhelming evidence to suggest that we could very possibly have a situation similar to 2008. There have been times when I considered the possibility that 2008 never actually ended. While the Federal Reserve engaged in quantitative easing, we paused the process. Now that this trend is reversing, the market's actual nature is finally being revealed. However, it is important to keep in mind that inflation is currently a global issue, which is why world leaders are beginning to meet to discuss the situation. First meeting that we will be taking a look out here. President Tsai from China meeting with Joe Biden on Monday for the first high-stakes sit-down with the Chinese leader. However, there are signs or chances that the green that we have witnessed is a result of short covering due to the prospect of a Fed market intervention. The local populace is fond of Larry Cheng. Yay? According to Larry Cheng, this is the largest short squeeze I have witnessed all year. I support the bulls, but this is unhealthy. This is a natural purchase. Bears are abandoning the market as they close as many short bets as possible. Again, it will be intriguing to observe whether or not all other global indices follow this pattern. It will be intriguing to observe the effects of these sessions on the economy as a whole. The only thing that we can demonstrate with absolute certainty is that the economy remains extremely uncertain. That concludes the video for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. While you're there, consider selling some free stock. I'm Matt Stoner, and I appreciate your time, and we'll see you again soon.